Hey guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards, and in this video, I want to look at Bowman's Best and discuss whether or not this is the best product of the year. The name Bowman's Best, you think this is the very best product, and they may not be lying, because for very few different reasons I'll discuss in this video, it could be one of the most popular sets of the decade. That sounds dramatic and like clickbait, I do not mean it to, because I'm actually sincere when I say that, and I'll explain why. But let's first discuss the 2021 Topps Bowman's Best set first, discuss why it has the potential to be a very important set, and then discuss what Topps did that might have accidentally made this the most important set of the decade. First things first, let's describe what Bowman's best is. Bowman's Best is a very interesting product. It's been around since I think 1995, I believe, maybe 1994. Scott Rowland, his primary rookie cards from Bowman's Best. It's a really good one to pick up because he might make the Hall of Fame here soon, just a heads up. And on top of that, other players have some of their most important cards in Bowman's Best. A lot of other sports, basketball, football, whatever else, have very important Bowman's Best cards in the mid to late 90s that help the Bowman's Best brand be popular. Very different because it's very unique design. It really pops differently than most flagship rate regular cards. Let's just look at this. This is a late year release. And the reason why it's cool, it has prospects, has rookies, it has veterans. It's one of the few sets that actually has those all. Obviously Bowman has them, but the difference between the paper Bowman and Bowman Chrome, this takes the very best of everybody. The very best prospects, the very best rookies, and the very best veterans, and releases them on a 100 card checklist. 100 cards is a lot smaller than most Bowman products and most products in general. For example, Topps flagship series one, two, and update has usually 700 to 900 cards. So 100 cards makes a fun product to open because it's easy to get good players. As you can see with this Juan Soto down here, it's kind of more futuristic, kind of more an art focused design, not necessarily like backgrounds that look like baseball fields, but a little bit different. Some people hate it, some people love it. I personally think it's cool, but at the same time, I understand if you didn't like it at all. It has a great refractor rainbow. Like historically, the refractor rainbow for this product is really small. What I mean by that is it has just like red, orange, gold, blue, purple. I prefer that instead of having all these different things. They did introduce these new lava parallels into to this set, but they look really cool, so I'll give them a pass. But if that continues, the product will get more diluted, which will hurt the long-term value, but for now, it's still a hobby-only product, which is nice. Like I just said, it is a hobby-only product. That's important because print runs are gonna be much, much, much lower than if there was retail configurations. There's only one hobby box form with four autographs in there, which is nice because that makes it so there's even less printed. There's just one way to get a Bowman's Best card that's in a Bowman's Best hobby box. So that's what makes this product nice, is there's just not much of it out there, and it does have such a strong checklist. It's been in the hobby, like I said, since I think 1994. Could have been 1995, but right around in those two years. A low pop, but still affordable. Juan Soto's best rookie cards, some of them, not the best rookie cards, are in Bowman's best. The refractors, because he doesn't have many chrome cards in general. He has the Topps Chrome Update, but the only non-numbered refractors are the pink refractors, which isn't super sought after by a lot of people. So Bowman's best people turn their attention to these because they're numbered refractors for a discount in comparison to the numbered Topps Chrome Update refractors that go for multiple thousands of dollars. New prospects, first cards, and new uniforms. So what I mean by that is a lot of times prospects will get traded in the middle of the year or actual rookies will get traded in the middle of the year. And usually Topps update is there for the rookies to have the player in their new uniform as they get traded. But for prospects, they don't have Topps flagship. So what Bowman's Best does, it takes those prospects who were traded and puts them into the new team's uniform. So you have a lot of players like Jared Kalenic is one of them. He is in his Mariners uniform first in Bowman's Best in the later part of that year, which was a very popular card for that reason. Four autographs per box, that's awesome, especially because the autograph checklist, like I'll show later, is really strong. It's big in other sports, like I already mentioned. Newly drafted players have cards exclusively in Bowman, like the Bowman that just came out, and Bowman's Best. Those are their first cards. So you could look at Marcelo Meyer, for example. He's a Red Sox prospect. He has his Bowman Chrome autograph, Bowman Chrome first card in that set, but he also has Bowman Chrome autographs and Bowman's Best cards, base cards, in this set. These are the only two sets for the year 2021 that he'll have cards. That's important because in in the long run, he's gonna have tons of prospect cards over the next two to three years, and this will be the ones to target. If you can't afford Bowman, you can go to Bowman's Best, and it's a really good option because it is one of the first two sets of the year he was drafted. All of the top rookies in one set is also nice. If you look at 2018 Bowman's Best, you have Soto, Acuna, Rafael Devers, Otani. Basically, everybody who is in that set are all in one checklist for the first time in the year, which really helps make it stronger. And lastly, this is the primary tops product with Atomic Parallels. Atomics are some of the most popular parallels in all of sports. Panini calls them cracked ice because they came from Bowman 
someone's best the way it actually looks. So here's what these cards look like in comparison to different sets and why they're important. You can see mid 90s to early 2000s, they were really important. These are the Atomic Parallels for Soto and Fernando Tatis Jr. They look amazing. Same with the Vince Carter Atomic Rookie and so forth. They just look a little bit different and to each their own. Some people don't like it. I personally like it, but it makes it a more fun product to collect because they're harder to find and the parallels are so unique. Here are the cards in this set that basically are all the inserts, base, parallels, everything. Very interesting design. It looks like it's like burning. So this is actually the edge of the card. It's gonna be almost impossible to grade with those edges and corners sticking out everywhere. Here's Marcelo right here. You can tell there's a card behind him. That's why you see that. But overall, this is his heat wave card. Then you have the base, you have the masterpieces, then you have the atomic, here's Wander's atomic, and a gold lava Mike Trout. You can see it's a different type of refractor. Gold lava autograph for Blaze Jordan. Here's just a regular green autograph, Austin Martin, and a couple different insert autographs and the base autograph for clinic. So let's just discuss the checklist for this set. This is the autograph checklist. I want you to look at these names. You get four autographs per box and 40 to 50% of these cards are good players to get autographs of. If you open Topps Chrome, the actual jumbo boxes where you get five autographs, you're gonna be let down almost always because there's 133 autographs in Topps Chrome with only three or four good players. And Bowman's Best, because it pulls from all the top prospects, all the rookies, and historically it has a lot of veterans. This doesn't have many. It has like Kyle Lewis and Keston Hira, but usually it has a lot of really good veterans like Bryce Harper, Mike Trout. This is the first year they didn't as they focused more on prospects, but overall it's strong. You can go with a lot of these players and you wouldn't feel too bad about yourself. So that's interesting. Let's just discuss this checklist. Let's talk about the new guys. You have Betty Montgomery, Henry Davis, Jay Allen, and Marcelo Mayer. And the good thing about these players is they had their first product released the same day in Bowman as Bowman's best. So this is their first opportunity to get these cards. Really cool because it's just a different version, but still will hold value as it's one of the first two products. Then you have the rookies. I'm surprised Surprise Joe Adele's not on the autograph checklist. He's on the base checklist, but not the autograph checklist. But you have basically everybody you want on this autograph checklist if you're collecting rookie cards. You know, Jonathan India, who's the rookie of the year, Kalenic, Bart, Mountcastle, Madrigal, Kirloff, Manoa, Vaughn, Carlson, Mize, Hayes. Everybody you're looking for is essentially here, which is nice because it does allow you to pull better stuff. But also Kalenic, he has hardly any rookie cards. So you can guarantee his top scrum update, which I don't think has been released yet. And this set are gonna be two of his most popular rookie cards. Then you have the old new guys. These are players who've had prospect cards throughout the entire year. They were in the original Bowman product that came out at the beginning of the year. That's like Blaze Jordan, Austin Martin, Luis Rodriguez, Christian Hernandez, and the Needy Cap. All these players had different Bowman appearances and they're all important and they're all on this autograph checklist. Then you have the top prospects like Julio Rodriguez, Spencer Torkelson, Wander Franco, Zach Veen, and Robert Powelson. All these players themselves are even stronger autographs. So you have a chance to pull any of these players in this product with a really small refractor rainbow while still having good odds of pulling good autographs and good parallels because it is a hobby only product. So that's the allure of Bowman's Best. This isn't necessarily me telling you who to look for. It's more of just kind of like a product in review and also describing the history of that product. And I just wanna show one more thing before I dive into where Tops may have screwed up royally for all of us for the next few years. But let's look at 2018 Bowman's best for Soto. He only has 960 PSA 10s. And overall, it's not a hard card to gem at all. You know, it looks like it's like a 90% gem rate. But he has 10,000 Topps Chrome Update PSA 10s. So in the long run, you have to think that the low pop will win out, especially as people are focusing on lower pop, more rare cards. And because of that, that helps Bowman's best in general. So I wanted to point that out. It's basically 10% of the print run, it looks like, of Topps Chrome Update in comparison, which is really important as we have to be smarter and wiser collecting cards moving forward now that the boom isn't as strong in the hobby. And just to hit on the checklist to show you a little bit more what I was talking about, you can pause the video and compare. I don't want to spend too much time. Look at the Topps Chrome checklist over here. 133 autographs. Hardly any of them will be worth anything, literally. And go look at the Bowman's Best checklist. It's night and day difference. You know, when this came out, it was 260 bucks a box, 162 bucks a box for Topps Chrome. And it's basically $81 per autograph because you only get two in a hobby box. You get four in Bowman's Best, so it's $65 an autograph. So for me, it's a no brainer, but you can pause and take a look at the checklist. So let's discuss where Tops may have screwed the pooch a little bit. And I'll discuss my thoughts on Beckett here. So what's going on is this is the first set that has been released in the last 10 years where 
Beckett is going to be considering every single prospect on this checklist as a rookie. And there's three things that Beckett looks for that determines that factor. Bowman's best has existed in the past. They've had the exact same configuration with veterans, prospects, and rookies. But this is the first year where Beckett says every prospect on this checklist, this is their rookie card, which is mind blowing for how many good prospects are on this checklist and why this could set this up as the most important set of the decade. So these are the three things to look for. The base set is the core of any release. Inserts parallels are something separate and have never been considered rookies in the Beckett database. The set includes veterans. If a set is only prospects and rookies, it's considered a prospect or minor league set. That's why recent Bowman draft baseball sets don't have rookies. For several years, uh, the base set has been exclusively draft picks and prospects. And then the set has wide distribution. It, sh it doesn't because it's not like a retail product, but I understand how they're saying I could go buy Bowman's best box online right now. You know, it's not released in the ballpark of the team themselves where it's hard to find. It's actually a, a regular distribution. Those are the three things they look for. So the thing that really pushed this over is the fact that the checklist includes prospects literally. Here's Christian Hernandez, who's a really important prospect from this year between Kyle Lewis and Aaron Judge. He's part of the checklist. While from previous Bowman's best years, they were in the top prospect section while the rookies and veterans were in their own section. It was a subset. The TP-1 is Juan Franco because it was a top prospect number one, Juan Franco, and so forth. So now what Beckett is saying is they're only going to be recognizing for Wander Franco for any of these prospects. You have Bobby Witt Jr., Marco Luciano, Blaze Jordan, Adley Rutschman. This is their only rookie card because anything produced next year will not be a rookie card according to Beckett. Tops does not look at it that way. And I think this was an oversight on accident by them. And I personally don't know if we should really consider Beckett as the expert on this anymore. Beckett has played an important part in the hobby, but the fact is Beckett should determine what a rookie card is is that should be either like us as the audience or the rookie logo and their argument it says currently not one member of the baseball hall of fame has the rookie logo on their rookie cards that's their way of saying it doesn't matter but the fact is the rookie card logo was introduced in 2006 and or 2005 one of those two years and so it's obvious no hall of famers have that rookie logo that was just introduced because no players have been eligible for the hall of fame we're gonna have that changing in the next five years when that will happen but the whole point of the rookie logo was to make rookie cards less confusing in baseball. Rookie cards have always been confusing. You know, you can look at Carl Yastrzemski, for example. He has his rookie card and then the next year it says rookie card on a second year card. That's confusing. Then you have Derek Jeter, who all of his cards, I believe, are 93, and he wasn't a rookie till two, two or three years later in 95 or 96. So Tops and the Players Association, Major League Baseball, decided that they could not put the rookie logo on a card until they hit the big leagues. And that's what's been happening until right now with this release. So I don't know if it's actually going to matter that these players true rookie cards according to Beckett, which I personally don't think they're the true rookie cards, are in the same Bowman's best set. But the fact of the matter is, if this checklist right here, every single prospect here is a rookie, you're going to want to have a sealed box of Bowman's best. <laughs> because if you can have Jared Kalenic, you can have Jonathan India, and then you have Julio Rodriguez, Wander Franco, Bobby Wood Jr., they're only rookie because Beckett won't recognize anything next year. Our second year card doesn't count. This is their only rookie card. And if that's the case, you're going to want a box. Either Topps screwed the pooch and just accidentally put them all in the same checklist and it was an oversight or it was intentional because they may be losing their license. So that's kind of one thing I wanted to point out that makes this Bowman's best set even more confusing and even more exciting. I don't think these hobby boxes are going to be very cheap, very much longer. And by the time you watch this, I think I said it was 260. I wouldn't be surprised if they're 350 when you watch this video, just because of this speculation. Wander Franco prospect cards from this set are already going for hundreds of dollars. I think one just hit hundred bucks for the base. The number of cards are going for even more because people are just anticipating this happening. And Beckett is kind of a dinosaur from the past of the hobby. They're still important, but even Beckett grading services, they're not the primary grading company anymore. You have PSA. So if PSA designates this as the rookie because PSA doesn't really do that. They just grade the card, which I respect about PSA. Then it could be a different story. But for me, I wouldn't put too much weight into this. Like their argument right here is not all rookie cards have a rookie logo. That's an accident by Tops. They might forget a player's a rookie that year. JT Muto is an example as well from 2015 update with Kike Hernandez right here. They didn't have a rookie logo, but that wasn't intentional. I think they just forgot because there are rookie logos on Francisco Lindor, Carlos Correa, Chris Bryant in that same set. So take that for what it's worth. I know this is a longer video, but I wanted to explain why this set is a little bit different than others and why it has potential value in keeping sealed wax. You can see here the long-term prices of these products. The stronger the checklist, the more valuable the sealed wax is, but it is a very good product to potentially have stored value if you don't want to have very much risk. Obviously, any sports card investment is a risk because it is connected to Major League Baseball, connected to player performance, but 
overall, it seems pretty safe to purchase a box of Bowman's Best, put it aside for a few years and see what happens. So other than that, let me know in the comments below what you guys' thughts are on this top. So Beckett situation, let me know which prospects you're targeting. And other than that, I will catch you in the next video. See ya.